What's up, guys? It's me, your badass host, Draven, and welcome to another episode of our Pokemon Omega Ruby walkthrough. Okay, so the champ is back, and now we got to go to Moss Deep City because apparently eh, there's still more things to go on about. I mean, there is a meteorite about to hit this earth and uh, six miles long in diameter and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. In our last episode, we managed to go to Rustboro City, talk to. Steven's dad, tell us about the meteorite and all that stuff. The Great War, and we defeated a what's her face, Deantha? Or no, not Deantha. Uh, that Dragonoid lady, whatever. And now, Moss Deep City and all that stuff. So let's fly away, and hopefully, we don't hit any pigeons or birds and all that stuff. And look at that, all the birds are there. Now, I wonder what kind of, uh, you know, hidden uh, Pokemon places I could find. Let's see. Oh, look at that. There's a hidden area right here. What is this? Ah, Crescent Isle. Now, we could go there and capture a legendary Pokemon, but that won't happen for quite some time. Right here, you can capture another Pokemon, the, na the Nameless Cavern as well. But, legendary Pokemon will have to wait later on. So, look at that. Going into Moss Deep City. The champ is back. Okay, alrighty. So here we are in Moss Deep City. Now we have to go to the Space Center right here. And, uh, well, let's see. Let's go right ahead. Talk to the guy. I didn't know where he is. I'm kind of being belligerent right now. So let's go straight up right here. This is the first time we're going to be visiting this place right here. I don't think we went inside the place. But here we are, the Space Center. And we're trying to find Steven. And, of course, we don't have any or any Pokemon that would be attacked by. But look at this. Oh, yeah. I'm an astronaut. <laughs> oh, damn. It's every kid's dream to be an astronaut, right? So we're going to sit right here. And look at that. The view is beautiful. A rocket ship can be seen from here, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Great. Okay, so let's go straight up right here. Talk to this lady. And she's like, you must be Draven. Mr. St uh, Steven Stone told me that he was ex expecting you. This way, please. I'm right, I'm right. I'm getting privileges now that I've become the champion. It's friggin' awesome. Very, very friggin' awesome. And, uh, well, here's Professor Cosmo. If, uh, Professor Cosmo, if I may interrupt you. Ah, uh, Draven. Thank you for coming. And you brought the meteorite shard with you. Well done! Handed him over. I was rather surprised to learn that you knew the professor. You really do seem to make connections everywhere you go. Now then, Professor. Could I ask you to explain once more about the current plan? Indeed. Please come this way. We're coming, we're coming, we're gonna go. And, uh, whoa, look at the computers. Freaking big ass computers. I imagine that you, uh, you've heard some of the situation from President Stone already. Our current plan involves using the infinity energy within our rockets, combined with the life energy of humans found in the keystones. The, or we will start off artificially repl or replicating the massive energy that it triggered at the time of the Mega Evolution. We will fire the energy produced from the rocket uh, into space and, then, uh, and create a warp hole. Oh, damn. A warp hole? By creating a warp hole in the path of the incoming meteor... Or meteor... Or meteoroid? What the hell? Meteoroid? No. Oh. We hope to be able to transport it somewhere away, far away from here. Hmm. As a matter of fact, this technology already exists and has been incorporated in some of our com commonly used items or devices. I think you know what I mean. Those panels that you spin, you or that you spin, you would uh, they would spin you, and then out you come warped to another spot. I imagine you've stepped on a few such. Yeah, I did. An audacious plan. And using such technology, you would. May I ask where exactly uh, this uh, the asteroid will be warped to? Well, we're not entirely sure, but we do have a device that links the warp holes. We've named them Link Cable. There's no need for to worry. Based on our theory, we can uh, at least guarantee that it will be sending it from our planet. However, we've realized that we will be need we will need more energy than originally anticipated to control the Link Cable properly. I'm sorry to ask, uh, ask this of you, but with one more meteor and shard... What the hell? What the hell's going on here? Oh, it's her! Nice! 
So this is the, the heart of the famous space center everyone talks about. Impressive, huh, Aster? Mur, 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 mur. Oh damn, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? Excuse me, young lady. You can't just uh, let yourself in here. Oh, where is the harm in it? Don't, uh, don't be such a stick in the mud. Right? Ugh. Oh damn. What the hell's going on here? This girl's like crazy and everything. Who are you? You're no sightseer. Oh, me? We do seem to be running into another, one another. You are a busy boy, Draven. Who, who are you? What are you doing here? Me? I'm Xenia. Just your regular old tourist, nothing more. Dreaming of taking a little trip into space, huh? Oh, I see. So this is what has come to human technology and hope to, and uh, of hope, blood, sweat, and tears, and well, the list kind of long and boring, but it contains everything, huh? I know all about it. About just what kind of energy you're using to fuel the rocket thing? The abominable technology of humanity first uh, thought of 3,000 years ago. So you're once again planning to claim that this is the best for humanity, or best for the world, uh, for the whole darn world. It's a snap of your fingers to repeat the sins of the past. Worse, if what I heard, overheard is true, this time you're about to commit an error more and more abominable than before. The heck? Tell me, would you rather sit here wringing up our hands waiting for the meteorite to strike us? <laughs> What's up with that? You're, uh, you're a pretty simple uh, guy for a formal Pokemon League champion. Then I guess I'll hang my hopes on what our current champion will have to say. So how about it, Draven? What do you think, uh, what do you think? Do you have some better idea? Heck yes! I'm just not gonna tell you, but I'm just gonna say, yeah, I bet you do. Oh, really? Well, that's promising. You have to tell me so that we can uh, set these, uh, these guys right. Look, I'm not here to criticize the way you guys are looking at this. But I want to be sure you got you go through this uh, well and good, I guess. You know there are necessary necessary uh, sacrifices, and there are unnecessary sacrifices. What a disappointment! This is the best uh, you could do, you know, with all your knowledge in technology. Instead of trying to make uh, something out of nothing, you'd rather repeat the mistakes of the past straight up. No, you're gonna add a few mistakes on top. That really takes uh, the cake. You guys need some imagination. The heck? You just have a point, you know. Oops. But you you were all in the middle of a conversation or something, right? Sorry about that. I guess we'll just uh, let ourselves out then. Come on, Aster. Mur -mur -mur. Damn. She does have a point, though. We'd rather make the same mistakes. Who was that woman? And the way she spoke to us? It's almost as if she came here for some kind of com confirmation. And yet, I feel as though I should know her from somewhere. Hmm. Ah. Professor, forgive me. I believe you were trying to tell us something before that woman interrupted us. Ah, yes. Uh, you see, in order to complete the warp hole, we will need another meteorite shard. An extremely pure one. Then, should we head to the Granite Cave once again? No, the kind of meteor, meteorite shard we need this time, it can only be found in the Meteorite Falls. Meteorite Falls? I see. Perhaps we will uh, learn something there. I will head to the Meteor Falls at once. Follow us as soon as uh, you're ready. I feel as, or I feel we might discover even more than a, meteor, a meteorite shard there. Yeah, that is true. I think we already went there at one point. Yeah, well, what the hell. Let's go. We're gonna go to the Meteorite Falls. Or Meteor Falls. I don't even know. Same thing! Okay, so uh, here we are going straight down. And, uh, well, Meteor Falls, they are filled with nothing but Dragon-type Pokemon uh, trainers there. And luckily for us, we can actually Eon Flute all the way over there now. Now, some of you guys have been, uh, have been asking. Offline or, you know, through my Facebook and all that stuff, too. Uh, what was it? Uh, will I be coming out with any kind of legendary Pokemon during this this whole thing right here, too? Uh, that will be separate from this story right here, guys. I am going to conclude this whole walkthrough at the end of this whole uh, Delta series. And then, like always, 
Uh oh, we lagged. We lagged! Oh, there it is. At the end of this series, or, you know, the Delta series, going into the Pokemon League, there will be a separate series on how to capture Pokemon in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That right there is just to complete the walkthrough and whatnot. So here we are, Route 114, and, uh, well, first is first. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy right here. Welcome, welcome! Let's see. Bye. What stone would you like to buy today? Now, here's the thing. This guy right here will eventually have you, or will eventually give you the Mega Stones for both Blaziken uh, and Mudkip, or you know, for the or for the starter Pokemon that you did not start, that you that you did not start with. So, let's see. What is it? Uh, tile and loneliness, emotionless tears. So I'm gonna go with the tears. Ah, you appreciate the value of this hard stone. How discerning are you? The shape, the color, the texture of the stone. If it reminds you of tears trickling down your face, wouldn't you agree? Especially for you, I'll set it for 150 Poké Dollars. 150,000 Poké Dollars. Okay, so I don't only really have enough right now, but eventually, Homeboy right here will give you the Mega Stones, which I will, I will eventually get. And there are Pokémon wanting me to capture it, but I will not because I'm going to use the, uh, whatchamacallit? That. Okay, so let's go straight up and uh, go into the Meteor Falls right here. Now, off screen, I did capture these, uh, the extra Pokemon that were available to this area right here. Some of them through trade and all that stuff, so that's always good right there. And, well, let's see. What's the last place? What's the next thing that I have to do right here? There really isn't uh, much that I can do now. And that repel has worn off pretty quickly right there, and, well,. Let's go inside and see what's up now. Now, here we are in the Meteor Falls. I believe we actually took a visit right here a while back. And let's see. I think we already have a Pokemon that has Waterfall. So let's go straight up to the Waterfall. And let's just jump up right here. Oh, crud. I don't even have a Pokemon with Waterfall. God dang it. A little annoying. And people are texting me right now. You know how much I hate that. So let's see. Waterfall. Let's give that to Hydra 2. Let's see. Waterfall. Four moves. And let's see. What should it forget? Yeah, not going to happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now... Oh, crap. Yeah, I'm not even paying attention right now. Okay, so I'm just... Uh, yes, give up. Okay. So what I'm going to do right here right now, guys, is I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to get myself a few Pokemon that I can use as HM slaves or whatever, and then I'll be right back. So, yeah, I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. I uh, completely forgot that, oh yeah, Hydra, Hydra 2 had Surf, so I had to teach Yokozuna Surf. But we got our good old buddy uh, uh, Nessie back, so it could take us anywhere we want in waterfalls and all that crud. And well, here we are in the second hidden area and all that stuff. Believe we've already faced all these trainers right here. Yeah, we did. And now we have to go to like the very, very far corner right here in order to find that meteorite shard that we, you know, they've been talking about right here. So let's see, right there. And there are some dragon type Pokemon waiting for us right here. And uh, they want us to capture them and all that crud. And well, let's see. Actually, hold it. We go right here, I think. I don't even know, guys. It's been a while since I've been in this place. I know that it's a maze and all that crud, but you know what? I like mazes. So we go right here. And well, there is an old couple right there that we haven't. Oh, yeah, we have already battled. And before we do anything, I have a feeling that we're going to get challenged again by somebody. So. Yeah, we, we are bear prepared right now. And the repellent's worn off. Yes, I'm going to be using another one right here. And there it happens to be Steven Stone. And he's like, Draven, we have the meteorite shard. I, and I have to understand many things, as I suspected might happen. Allow me to introduce you. The honorable lady you see before you is a descendant of the uh, ancient Draconoi Draconids. Draconids. Yes, I am one of the Draconid people. One of the ancient folk tasks uh, with passing down the knowledge of Mega Evolution with a great lore of Lord Rayquaza, who was the beginning of all. Of all. Lord Rayquaza? Oh, damn. Since times, uh, since times long gone, Hoenn has repeatedly suffered great disasters. 
At times, the destruction took the form of a huge meteorite, or meteorid, meteorid, I don't even know how to say that, which fell upon the land from distant space. At other times, the primal versions of our own super ancient Pokemon brought us to the, to the brink of destruction. Each time, Lord Rayquaza has saved us from the doom. The chosen Lord Keeper standing before a stone that shone with rainbow light offered a, up a wish to the Great One. And Lord Rayquaza, body, or Lord Rayquaza's body was suffused with a brilliant light and transformed. It transformed, and in its transformed state, Rayquaza's power was more devastating than ever before, overcoming even the super ancient Pokémon with their prime over power. A rainbow-colored stone, an invocation from the Lord Keeper, and a Rayquaza unlike any other ever seen. I see. It does resemble what we know of the process of Mega Evolution. Yes, it does indeed. A Pokemon, a person, a stone of power, the bonds that tie them all together. The transformation of the Pokemon that occurs as a result of this phenomenon is called Mega Evolution by Lantern Peoples. So the, me the mechanism of uh, Mega Evolution was discovered as a result of the first meeting between humanity and Rayquaza. Hmm. But I have one last question. The Lord Keeper you speak of, or you spoke of. The Lord Keeper is the one who has inherited the knowledge and power to summon Lord Rayquaza when disaster imperils the, this world. The true Lord Keeper of the current generation is the one called Xenia. Oh, damn. The disaster that now approaches our planet as it has twice before, Xenia has been trying to, or has been trying for some time to avert it in her own way. To draw Lord Rayquaza to our sphere, she joined a certain organization that sought to revive the super ancient Pokemon. She taught them the secrets needed to bring back the threats and summon the great dragon itself. Oh. And now it seems she travels the land, scaring or scoring the world for the keystones. So it was true. As I suspected, the woman who appeared at the space center was one was one of the Draconids. But I never dreamed that she would be involved in the attempted revival of the super ancient Pokemon. In full knowledge of the Pokemon they held, fully understanding the terrible changes they would wreak upon our world. Still, she helped bring that situation about. Did she give a thought to the many people and the Pokemon whose lives were in grave risk by her actions? Could she accept the inevitable sacrifice of so many lives in order to protect the, the planet from the coming meteorid? Meteorite or meteorite? I don't even know. Balance what must rule this world. History is doomed to repeat itself. While our people have overcome many disasters in the past, it was always through great, great sacrifice. Yet, we have continued to struggle to preserve peace for as many years as we can. That is how many, that is how we have protected this uh, world upon which we now live. People, Pokemon, all nature, and yes, even you. I do not know exactly what you plan to do, but do you believe that you are not sacrificing anything for your own protection? Xenia will follow her convictions until their very end, even knowing the sacrifice that will, they will require, even if they, even if the sacrifice, uh, sacrificial blade is leveled at her own heart. Oh damn! Strong convictions. Strong, strong convictions. Dot, dot, dot. Is that right? I understand. Thank you for everything. What is this? This vague sense of apprehension. And my intuition has uh, often proved true. I'm going back to Rustboro first. I have to get back to Devon. Hmm. Okay. Alrighty. So he's going back to Devon. I need to talk to this lady. Let's see. The silver-haired dreamboat said that he was heading back to Rustboro. Well, well, it looks like we're going to have to go back to Rustboro. Anywho, guys, this concludes our episode right here. Again, I know, we're going by pieces, but this is a nice story. You know, the Delta series and all that stuff. I will be back for another episode of Pokemon Omega Ruby. That way, you know, you guys fulfill your, your need for more Pokemon episodes right here on my channel. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.